So today I had to break down and go out and pick me up a new air compressor for the garage here. Now what I chose to go with is this Husky unit being sold at Home Depot and the model number is C201H. Now this unit is rated to produce 175 PSI and it has a 20 gallon storage tank. It produces about four SCFM at 90 PSI, SCFM standing for standard cubic feet per minute and it will also put out uh, 5.2 SCFM at 40 PSI. Now this one here is my old tired air compressor, you know, and I've had this thing for nine years, so I can't complain. It's given me a lot of good work and I've done a lot of things with this thing. I initially got this when I built an addition on my house nine years ago and I used it to do that. When I got done, naturally I kept it and I've used it for all sorts of things on doing my vehicle repairs. And it's held up pretty well up until about the last year and I've had to start replacing things. And then here over the weekend, my pressure switch went out on it so it's not coming on. Uh, I've had a really bad leak that's been coming out here in my regulator and my quick connect fittings have been starting to leak and it's even got a flat tire over there on the other side. So this poor thing's been used up quite a bit and it's time for it to be replaced. And so I was anxious to get this one here because while this unit has a four and a half gallon storage capacity, this one has a 20. And so I'm hoping it's gonna give me longer run times with my tools. Now for me, what I do is I don't really use an impact gun, if you will, all that frequently because about a year ago year and a half ago actually i picked up this 18 volt impact gun uh, it's a rigid from home depot and it just does a great job for what i'm looking to do now i know they make bigger heavier duty ones but i got to tell you this thing has maybe three times in the last year has this not done the job for me and i've had to break out this one here now what i like about this one is it's just lighter so it's easier on my arms as i use it throughout the day but with this one here, this one puts out 800 foot pounds and the model number on this one is H4480 and it uses about four cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI. And then some of the other things I use is naturally you got your little blow tip. Everybody uses these. I use these to clean off parts of a motor and get debris and things like that out before I take the motor apart. Also use it when I detail to get in the little nooks and crannies, clean out vents, things of that nature. These do great. I also have a new brake bleeder that I use a lot. This is probably the biggest thing I use my air for. And I use this not only to bleed brakes, but I use this to remove different fluids from different reservoirs or maybe from like a transmission before I take the pan off. That way it just eliminates a big mess. And so I use this quite a bit. I also have this here and this here is called a Tornador. And I use this for detailing cars and it's basically, it takes cleaner and injects it out. But both of these here use quite a bit of air as I use them. And what I run into is after about a minute, minute and a half, I have to shut this thing off or I have to stop using it and allow it to fill up for about five minutes before I can use it again. So I'm anxious to see what kind of additional runtime I'm gonna be able to get out of my tools by going with a 20 gallon storage capacity as opposed to a 4.5. So the first thing I want to do is let's just do kind of a walk around of this unit. Let's talk about some of the things that it has on it and some of its features. And then let's hook it up. Let's see how long it takes for it to refill or to fill actually because it's empty right now. And then what we'll do is we're going to test it out with some of the tools and let's see how well it works. Let's start with just a quick overview of what comes with the unit. Now this here is the informational sheet that comes with it. And I'll put a copy of that up here just so you can all see what's included with that. Then it just has the user and care guide that's included with it. And also in there they have a quick startup guide as well as service parts. And so I'll put copies of what's available on there. If Home Depot has a PDF version of this manual on their website, I'll also provide you with a link to that. So let's start with just a general overview and walk around of our new compressor here. Now from this distance here you can easily tell you can see that handle's bent 
right here that you would actually grab and move it with and you'll see here on the side you can see it better now quite frankly as you saw earlier this compressor runs two hundred dollars I went to return this compressor because I didn't notice that till I got it back here to the garage and they actually offered to give me a forty dollar discount on the compressor if I would keep it as is and so I did that I, I think I can easily straighten out that handle so I got a really great deal I ended up paying only a hundred and sixty dollars for this compressor but let's start off here up on the top and we'll work our way down now right here we have our on off button that's for it we have a six foot power cord that's included with it as well now right here is our main manifold and starting at the left working our way to the right you have your safety valve the brass valve that's there to the far left you have your two different uh, gauges there that's included the gauge there to the left is for your tank pressure and your gauge to the right is for your regulated pressure that's coming out and then naturally you have your knob that is included with it there naturally to adjust your pressure and it has just some more labels here to talk about more features I haven't even peeled the plastic off as we come down here just list some more features you'll see it mentions the 80 percent longer air tool runtime and basically when they do that that's a comparison versus another compressor that would have a 150 psi rating that would be a 20 gallon at a 175 psi in theory it's supposed to give you longer runtime and they're saying 80 percent does mention that the unit is assembled here in the us of a and we do have the wheels down here it has seven inch plastic wheels that are included with it i would like to have seen larger rubber wheels just so it makes it easier while we're down here let's just go ahead and take a look up here on the front it just has a stand for it to rest on i wish it had some rubber boots on that uh, quite frankly i'm thinking i may do an upgrade and put bigger wheels on it and when i do i'll put some rubber boots on it now right in here we just have more of the standard you know warning labels and the husky labels and things of that nature as we come up here we'll just go through some more on the back here you have your check valve back of your compressor and we'll just do a walk around up here on the head so you can get a better view part of the specs that are listed with this air compressor is the fact that it can fill the tank in seven minutes when it's empty and so we're going to test that theory now i have my stopwatch set up back here and our compressor is at zero as we can see here let's turn it on and see how long it takes to fill So it took us roughly nine minutes and 55 seconds to get the tank to fill. So it didn't quite meet the seven minute mark that they talked about. However, I'm sure that there's certain specifications that they use to come up with that number. I'm sure it's at a certain temperature and certain elevation. Now where I'm doing this compressor, where I live, we're at a mile high in terms of elevation and it's really cold out today it's about 20 degrees outside right now and i don't even have the heater on in my garage so i'm sure those factors play into it however i've done this test twice and it has not filled up in the seven minute time frame but it has filled up let's say right around the 10 minute mark so for my next test what i wanted to do was i just took my blow gun straight here into the manifold and what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn that thing on i'm going to let it go and I'm just curious to see how long this will actually put air out at full pressure. And we're going to do it at 90 PSI before the compressor has to come on. And then I'm going to keep it held down and I'm going to let it go for a bit because I'm curious to see how well it's going to hold and put air out through the blow gun over an extended period of time. So 
So actually it did quite well. It went about 25 seconds, I believe it was, before the compressor had to come on. And then with me just maintaining, holding down that trigger, it was able to put out a really good amount of pressure through it. You could actually just continually use this blower and it would do just fine. It went and held about 60 PSI for quite some time. And then at about the two minute, two minute, 15 second mark, you can kind of see it in there, but it then started to drop down and it looks like it went down to about 40, but then it held the 40 really strong. So to be able to use a blow gun, I could easily sit and do this and clean a lot of stuff off with. I mean, let's be honest, how often are you gonna use your blow gun for three minutes nonstop? It's usually in short bursts. I gave my compressor a chance to refill, and now I have my Tornador detail gun connected to it. I didn't put fluid or anything in here. What I wanna do is similar to the blow gun test is, I wanna turn this on, see how long this gun will run before actually the air compressor comes on. And I believe this is something that would be real comparable to a paint sprayer as well. But let's just do this test here and let's see how it goes. So that was actually really impressive on that test. It will handle this Tornador detail gun at a constant use with absolutely no problem whatsoever. Even under constant use after three and a half minutes there, we're still maintaining a 60 PSI constant flow, which is more than enough for this gun to be able to work. I'm really happy and impressed with that. I was never able to do that with my DeWalt compressor. Now I'll be able to just constantly use my Tornador without having to stop and wait for it to refill. I really like that. Now I'm gonna do my pneumatic brake bleeder and I suspect this is gonna work pretty much like the Tornador detail gun did and that this should easily be able to keep up with it. However, this may have a bit more of a flow rate than the Tornador, so I'll be anxious to see. So I'm gonna get ready, I'm gonna set our stopwatch and we're gonna turn this on. Let's see how long it runs before the compressor comes on and how long it can run continuously before we'd have to shut it off and let it catch up. So I'm gonna stop that there at three minutes and 35 seconds. And really similar to the Tornador, this will be able to keep up with constant use on my pneumatic brake bleeder for me to be able to do my brake jobs or be able to remove fluid from maybe a transmission or oil from a mower, whatever the case that you're gonna use these to remove fluid out of something. This compressor is more than able to keep up with the usage and the demands that this tool requires. Next, I have my impact gun connected here and I just put a socket in there. I'm gonna provide with, uh, some resistance, if you will, with my hand on this end. And we're just gonna hit that trigger. I wanna see how long this will work before my compressor comes on. And just like our last two tests, I'm just gonna keep doing it and working it and see how long this will work. We'll go to about three and a half minutes and let's just see how it works with an impact gun. So it went to about there and we just, we lost enough pressure with the gun that it really, if you were trying to use it, you'd have to stop at that point and let it refill. But that was about a 45 second run there that I was able to hit that. And if you were doing something like taking off lug nuts or something like that, naturally you're not gonna do a constant for 45 seconds. Normally you're gonna be doing it in bursts. So for this next test, I wanted to do something a bit more real world with our compressor. Now I have my Husky impact gun here that I use when I do need an air impact gun. This here is the model H4480 and it's rated to put out 800 foot pounds of torque and it uses four cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI, which is their recommended operating range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I just brought in one of our expeditions here and I haven't had these wheels off for about a year, so these should be on here good and tight. And what I wanna do is just see how well our compressor keeps up with the impact gun and removing these lug nuts. 
Now, I have the front end of our Expedition picked up, and so what I plan to do here is I'm actually going to take these lug nuts off, and when I'm done with these, I'm immediately going to walk over to my compressor, shut it off, move the camera and everything over to the other side, to the other wheel, and we're going to do it again so it gives us a realistic, actually continual usage with our compressor rather than let the compressor want run why move everything to the other side because that way it give it a chance to catch up i want the compressor to just act as if all i did was walk around to the other side with my hose and start up on the other wheel and i think that will give us a more realistic test of how this is going to work so let's get started and here we go Well, I gotta say, that's really nice. I just took off these five lug nuts and my air compressor didn't even come on. So I don't have to worry about walking over and turning off the compressor. Now all I gotta do is just move you all with me over to the other side. Let's see how far we can go on the other wheel before that compressor comes on. Now we're over here to the driver's side. Let's see how far it goes before the compressor comes on and let's see if it keeps up. You know, actually, I'm pretty impressed with this compressor and being able to keep up with my Husky Impact gun here. Now, with my other DeWalt compressor, I would have got through two, maybe three lug nuts on that other side, and I would have had to have stopped and waited for the compressor to catch up with my Impact gun. I really like the fact I was able to get through all the five lug nuts over there on that other side, and my compressor never even came on. It really goes to show how beneficial it is to have a larger storage tank to be able to hold more air so you have more runtime with your tools before your compressor needs to start compensating for that. Now, on this side, the first two lug nuts kind of gave me some hassles on there, um, but we were able to get them off, as you see, all five on this side, so we used a bit more air on this side, but the compressor was more than able to keep up with my impact gun, and we got all five lug nuts off. Now, I'm sure I could have upped the amount of pressure that's going to my impact gun, and I could have sped things up a bit on this side, but I wanted to keep things constant in terms of our pressure and where I had it set at, so that it gave us a continuous flow throughout our test, and I thought it did really good with that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get these wheels put back on, get the lug nuts on, get them torqued back down, get this out of the garage, and then let's do a final walkthrough and some of our findings that we have with our Husky air compressor. So what's our final thoughts when it comes to the Husky air compressor here? Well, for me and what I particularly want to use it for, it's going to work really well. It's able to keep up with my pneumatic brake bleeder as well as my Tornador detail gun and like a blow gun for wiping off dirt and dust and debris off of motors and interiors of cars. It's able to keep up with that with a constant flow rate without any issues. Now, when it comes to my impact gun, I was able to take off the two wheels off the front of our Expedition with absolutely no problems whatsoever, and it was able to keep up with my impact gun there so now for me since I only use my impact gun sporadically and at that I only use it three maybe four times a year with the amount of air that this produces it's going to do more than fine for what my particular needs are now quite frankly if you're going to use your impact gun more often than what I do or you have something that's going to use more air than the tools that I used over that four cubic feet per minute at 90 psi then I would probably consider going with a bigger air compressor than this one or what you're going to find yourself doing is waiting for this thing to catch up to be able to use your tools and that can be really irritating. Now I will say at the price that I was able to get this at I think it was a good deal. Now the day I went and picked mine up it was on sale for $199 that day and 
because of the bent handle that it had up here, they actually knocked $40 off. I ended up at $160. Now, I did go back through and I kind of straightened this out and I got it looking pretty good. It's not 100%, but for $40, it's completely irrelevant. This is only used to move it around. So at $160, it's a no-brainer that I'm going to keep this compressor. But at $199, it would be a good deal. Now, maybe some of the things that I don't care about this compressor is... I wish it had two outlets up here. Now, it's rare that I ever actually need to hook up two things at one time, but it would be nice to just have that ability to do that should I need it. And so we only have one outlet up here. The other thing that's actually quite a pain on these compressors is the f where they located the drain at the very bottom of the tank to get to it. You either have to reach way down underneath and try and get your hand up in there to get to it, or you're gonna have to tilt it over on its side and get it open and then stand the compressor back up again. And that can be really inconvenient. I wish it had some rubber type wheels on it, maybe a bit bigger so it's easier to move it out or around over rough surfaces. And I wished on the front here, on the pedestal that it actually came with maybe some rubber feet to help reduce noise and vibration. However, those are things that I can easily upgrade, if you will, over time. Now, I did go out and I went ahead and I picked up one of these little drain adapters so I can put this on the bottom of my compressor. And the downside is, you know, it's a braided hose, but it's going to hang like this. So every time you go to move your compressor, it's going to drag on the floor. If, you, if I did like a hard pipe system, then the issue is if you catch it on something, it's going to bust it off. So I'm kind of stuck with this one and I'm going to have to come up with a way to maybe attach it to one of these wheel supports down here. And that should get that fixed up really well. I'm going to get some rubber feet and put it on the front. And I'm only going to go through that because I got such a great deal on the compressor. Now, I wanted to give you just some other ideas. So as you're thinking about this and want something to compare with, some ideas for you to think about. Now, when I go over and look over at Lowe's, they have a cobalt unit that's also a 20-gallon compressor, also puts out four cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI and also builds up to 175 PSI. That one also runs for 239, which is the normal retail price of that unit. Now, what is adv advantageous of the Cobalt unit over the Husky unit is it does come stock with two outlets for your air to be able to go on here. They actually have the drain in a better location. It's more here to the edge, so it's easy to get to it from the outside. And it does come with the rubber feet for the pedestals in the front. And so if you're going to be at the 239 price, I would maybe recommend that you consider going over, take a look at it at that cobalt unit and maybe going that way on it. Now, if I run over to Harbor Freight, um, the best one that would be comparable to this, in my opinion, is going to be the new McGraw unit they have there. That one is a 21 gallon unit. Same production, four cubic feet per minute, 90 PSI, 175 PSI max pressure on it. Now on their website, they have that one listed at 259, so it's gonna be a bit more than these. Um, however, with Harbor Freight, as we all know, they're gonna have coupons that come out from time to time. And you'll be able to beat that by quite a bit. I suspect you'll probably be able to get it at 239. For some reason, all these companies, 239 is the magic number when it comes to a 20 gallon compressor. Now, some of the advantages that the McGraw may have over the Husky is gonna be that and here I drop my notes here, is that it also does come with a better drain valve location as opposed to the Husky. It does have the rubber feet up on the front pedestals as well. It does only have one outlet here. So in terms of the better options overall for the 239 price, I would maybe recommend taking a closer look at that Cobalt. Now I wish I could do a test for you here on that, but here at Javo's Garage, we just don't have that kind of budget. And this year was the one I went with and I got a good deal on it, so I'm gonna be sticking with it. So, you know, in the end, if you can get one of these for 199, it's a great deal for the $40 difference. You know, the drain thing's not the end of the world, the rubber feet, not the end of the world. I would really consider going with this unit. But if you're up at paying that full 239 price, 
Take a strong look at that cobalt unit. I think you may be a bit happier with that for the money that you're going to spend. So, hey, I hope this video has been helpful for you at all in making a decision for you and your garage. If it has, do me a favor and hit that like button for me. If you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Stick around with me here in the garage. As always, I appreciate you stopping by and thanks for watching.